Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Conversations on Conflicts. Uh, in this episode, we're joined by a very special guest, one of our previous peacemakers of the year, and our uh, one of our senators for the great state of Maryland, Cheryl Kagan. Uh, Senator, thanks for joining me today. How are you feeling? Thanks, Ben. Great to see you again. Of course, of course. Uh, I want to thank you uh, for giving me some of your time today to, to talk about some of the conflict um, and some of the how you know how conflict intertwines with politics here. And so that's that's going to be my, no. my first. Is point. that possible? Really? Oh yes. <laughs> well, it, very very possible, as I'm sure you all know. Yeah, um, yeah. So the, the first thing I want to ask is how you how you negotiate around the, the challenge of how you know politics and conflict kind of seem to go hand in hand, at least from the perspective of the outsiders. Yeah, thank you for asking. So first off, thanks to you and to everyone at CRICMIC, uh, the Conflict Resolution Center in Montgomery County for all that you do in our community and to try to bring people together, find common ground. It is what I try to do in Annapolis. Um, so to answer your question, um, starting with trolls, I think outsiders are more um, disputatious, to use an SAT word here, um, but more provocative and more conflict seeking um, and more critical and mean. I think on the inside, uh, we try to work together when possible, and it isn't always possible. Mm -hmm. uh, when we were dealing with increasing the minimum wage or my bill to ban styrofoam because it's bad for public health and bad for the environment, uh, that tended to be, those bills tended to be more partisan with Democrats supporting them mostly and Republicans mostly opposing them. Mm -hmm. but, um, but there's so many issues that we can work together on. Uh, the example of Capitol Hill is really not the way things work in Annapolis. Yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah. Oh, please go ahead. Well, I just want to say, so years ago when I ran a foundation, there was a colleague of mine, another vice president, uh, and he considered himself a, a right wing Republican and you're some crazy liberal Democrat and we don't agree on anything. And I said, Mike, I totally don't see it that way. I said, you want great schools, right? He said, well, of course. And a clean environment, clean air and clean water. He said, well, naturally. And I said, and you want safe transportation, safe neighborhoods, all that. Well, that's obvious. I said, we all agree on all of that. The question is how you get there. Mm -hmm. And so it's really the intervening steps. And But if we can all see the end product uh, of a balanced budget and great schools and safe neighborhoods and a clean environment, the question is what's reasonable and how can we work together to get there? Yeah. And that's the way I try to do things. Uh, I, am I love that. I love that. Yeah, the collaborative spirit. Yeah. Totally. So I was one of the founders of the Faith and Politics Institute. And it's basically using your inner morality and your values rather than looking for differences, but to find common ground. And I wish more people on Capitol Hill were guided that way. And they may not be. I think we all feel that way for sure. <laughs> That's right. Um, but let me tell you about a bill I'm sponsoring this year. Yeah, please. It supports the nonprofit community and we support groups like RICMIC. And I, rather than just sponsoring it myself or just talking to Democrats in an election year, I have been seeking co-sponsors from across the aisle. And I now have a healthy majority of the Senate all co-sponsoring, Democrats and Republicans, conservatives and liberals uh, from around the state and it will help the nonprofit sector, which is in every district around the state. And mm -hmm. so I explain it um, and they see the wisdom and the prudence of it and they sign on. So sometimes it just takes a little more time, but it's mm -hmm. totally worth the outcome. And the fact that we've got a majority on, I am very optimistic that that bill will move forward. All right. Well, I mean, I love to hear that, obviously, from from my from, you know, my perspective working in a nonprofit. Yeah. Um, and, and thank you for the work you're doing in, in supporting organizations like ours. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, let me ask you, how, how where did you get the, the skills that you're using to, to do these negotiations to build this collaboration? Is that something that you you felt like you were always good at or is that something you had to learn as you sort of moved into this world? It's a really good question. And I don't know if I know the answer. I guess I just think it's obvious. I think it's common sense. I call Not intuitive myself- Intuitive for you? A little bit. I mean, I call myself 
a common sense progressive or an independent minded progressive. And so I, I try to call it as I see it. I try to do things that are fair and reasonable. And those are just values of mine. I care mm -hmm. about justice and fairness. And sometimes that means voting with the Republicans because sometimes leadership does something, especially under the former president. Um, he would just wanna show kind of who's in charge and we're the boss. And sometimes it was like, Mike, you're being kind of a jerk about this. And uh, there are procedural issues. The Republicans might ask for a little bit more time to review a 92 page bill. And I just think that's reasonable. Let's not vote on it now. Let's give them an extra day. That seems reasonable. And we're gonna pass it or kill it anyway, whatever the intent is, but let's let them do their homework more and marshal their forces. That's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the votes, but I just think there's a dignity and a respect that we can offer even our opponents. As long as they are respectful to us, Mm -hmm. Now, if there's someone who's out there and says, oh, Senator Kagan's an idiot and she's that. Uh, I had trolls on a bill uh, a few years ago and they were just attacking me on Twitter rather than asking me why I voted against the bill they supported uh, and working with me to make the bill better so that I could support it or that we would pass it the following year. They just were attacking me. And when mm -hmm. they came back and wanted to pass it the next year, and they radically reworked the bill in a way that made it better, uh, those bridges are hard to to build again. Yeah, uh, I'm sure. Because it's a little, you know, you're a little gun shy. You're humiliating me or criticizing me in public. Nobody likes that. Uh, so, you know, there's stuff that that we can let slide, and there's stuff that we remember. And mm -hmm. you now come back and you want to be my bestie. That's a little hard to do. Yeah, no, I, I can definitely see how that would be difficult to deal with. Yeah. Um, has it? Had, do you feel like it's um, gotten easier to sort of tune out those those negative voices that are always chirping every time you're trying to do something in a in a positive direction? It depends. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some issues when I know that I am going to be poking the bear. So uh, the Metro CEO uh, Paul Wiedefeld, who I think has done a really uh, dedicated and thoughtful job as CEO or general manager of our metro system, uh, just announced his retirement. And I know that anyone who has ever had a problem with a delayed train or, uh, or a concern about fares or parking or whatever issue is provoking them, uh, mass transit is complicated and expensive. And you have everything from union challenges to equipment that's broken to everything. And so I posted and I thanked him for his service basically. And I said something like, I know the trolls aren't gonna like this, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So I acknowledged and called them out and they still came back with mm -hmm. some version of, you're an idiot because Metro sucks. And uh, you know, is Metro perfect yeah. every day, every time any of us wanna get on a train? No, but should Paul Wiedefeld be thanked for years of dedicated service to try to make it safe and accessible and affordable? Absolutely. So you know what you know, it's part of the uh, part of the challenge of being in public office and in public life sometimes. Yeah, no, I, I can definitely, I can certainly, um, you know, see those challenges creeping in. Yeah. Um, so how, I want to ask you, you just said something that was interesting to me, how, you know, I finally uh, said something that was oh, interesting. No, Good. no, no, stop. stop. <laughs> um, the, what, what, you, what you were saying about how um, there's so many nuances, there's so many things behind the scenes, right? You know, people who are upset over a late train or delays and things like that uh, may not understand all the intricacies and all the small things going on behind the scenes. Uh, so how much of your job and your role is trying to explain that to the public, trying to take, you know, sort of take that, that big picture and, yeah. you know, you know, put it, put it into perspective a little bit better for, for the for the residents of, of Moncrief. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. And thank you for using the word residents rather than citizens. Mm -hmm. I, I use the word residents as well. So I love a story that was my very first year in office. And as folks watching probably don't know, I'm in the eighth, my eighth year in the Senate, but I actually served eight years in the House. I then took a 12 year gap. Uh, I got out of office and was back in the community and active in the nonprofit sector and all that. So anyway, in my very first year in office, I had a constituent come up to me once and finger waggers are just the worst. So he comes up to me and says, you better vote for this bill. 
And, Physi physically yeah. finger wagging at you? Physically finger wagging wow. in my face. All right. Like you better vote for this bill. And before I could even edit myself, I said, that stupid bill. And I said, sorry, that's not what I meant to say. That bill is ill-advised. Ill and let me tell you why. Because here's the thing. They might have gotten back in the old days a postcard or today they might have seen a tweet or gotten a brief email with with um, incendiary language saying, you know, chicken little the sky is falling unless this bill passes or, kill, or is killed or something. I might have sat through hearings, maybe for hours or but for a long time, hearing testimony from proponents and opponents, reading the fiscal implications and all that. And so I explained to this constituent, Here's why that bill doesn't make sense. And I laid it out for him. And, mm -hmm. uh, and at the end, he said, I don't know whether you've persuaded me, but you have educated me that it's not as simple as I thought. And I see that there are two sides to this issue. And so thank you for that. That's beautiful. I love how, I love how you put that. You haven't persuaded me, but you've educated me. That's great. I loved it too. It was a great conversation. And I don't always have time. We have a lot of bills before us every year. And frankly, most bills get killed. There are only four committees in the Senate. And so um, if the bill is in one of the other three committees and it's killed in committee, I'm unlikely to ever hear about it, read it, know about it, hear a debate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gotta be pretty pretty high visibility for that. So, so I don't take the time generally to explain or research um, a bill that's not in my committee because I trust my 11 or 12 colleagues on that committee to make a thoughtful decision and uh, and that's what I move forward. But on my bills, on my work on 911 or consumer protection, mm -hmm. the environment or nonprofits or any of the other work I'm doing, I like to consider myself pretty expert. Um, I've got four election reform bills and they are all emergency bills. They're critically important. Around the country, there's too much restriction about voting rights. And here I'm bringing, I'm bringing four bills to make sure that we clarify and run our elections even better. So some of it is just, again, common sense. It's not ideological. I think and hope all four will pass in a bipartisan and, uh, and not contentious manner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I I certainly hope the same right there with you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I like what you said about you know trusting your your eleven or twelve the colleagues that are in these other committees that you know yeah. they're going to to do to do the good work that you know you're not going to have to sort of peer into everything. Yeah. Something that that is is curious to me and maybe curious to some of our viewers. How much time do you have to actually you know sit out and go out to to dinner and have lunch with these colleagues where you're not talking about bills. Is, does that ever happen? Is that something, do you ever have the free time to do that? Thank you for asking that, Ben. So I think a lot of people think that we are um, better compensated and have, well, first off, it's a 90-day session. So they say, oh, what do you mm -hmm. do the rest of the year? So for three months, I'm in Annapolis and we are doing the people's work, passing the budget and passing legislation. The rest of the year, I'm in the community and working on my legislation. So it is a year time, you know, full year, year round job. And I always say it's less than half time pay for more than full time work. Hmm. I work all the time uh, and people notice, they appreciate it. And they call me one of the hardest working senators in the state. And I, I may be that I do. I work my butt off. And to be clear, our current salary is just over $50,000 a year, which is probably, I hope, less than, uh, than you or most of CRICMIC staff, most nonprofit staff. Uh, and I have a huge responsibility that I'm honored. Uh, there are only 47 members of the Senate and we have to do, we have to review all bills related to the budget, education, transportation, healthcare, the environment, gun control, like you name it. It's everything. And we have to do it in three months. So do I have time for myself? Yes, I make time for myself. I go to the gym, I see friends. Uh, I'm actually a nationally ranked Scrabble player. And yes. when you guys honored me as Peacemaker of the Year, I thought one of the coolest things was uh, you or one of your colleagues tracked down some of the prior 
uh, national champions and have them join the testimony, the video mm -hmm. testimony. I thought that was great. I have a I'm concert series. That. I've hosted uh, national touring singer songwriters in my home for this would be uh, the 21st year and COVID is obviously messing with that. But um, but yeah, I have other hobbies, uh, but, but being a Senator uh, is demanding and I wanna do it right. And uh, when I introduce myself as, I'm Cheryl Kagan, very proud to be the Senator for Gaithersburg and Rockville. I mean that, and I really wanna do my best um, that I can possibly do. Um, to get them their unemployment benefits, to help them with um, with housing issues or um, or MVA issues or whatever it is that comes up, and we help solve problems in addition to doing legislation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and you know, I I know I know from my personal experience how hard you work for your constituents, uh, and I'm sure your constituents appreciate it, even if they may not know all the work that you're doing for them. Certainly. Um, so let me let me just interject for a second. Please. If people aren't aware of what I'm doing, I have five Facebook pages, two Twitter accounts, two YouTube channels, and an Instagram page. And I also have a YouTube channel, and people can watch uh, my kibitzing with Kagan on my YouTube channel and subscribe to that. We um, those are brief conversations with people I find fascinating, and folks might be surprised to know that I manage all my social media myself. My staff does not even have the passwords to any of it. So I do all of that. And I think that's an important part of my job to make sure that I can communicate my priorities, my positions and my values. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And I'll, I will, um, for anybody watching, you can find all the links to all of that in the description below of this YouTube video. And, you know, and I highly suggest going to check out um, Senator Kagan's um, channels there to, to check out all of her content. Um, I know how, how difficult it is to put all that content together. And it is very surprising to me to hear that you're doing that all yourself. So kudos yeah. to you on that for sure. Thank you. Um, so I know I know you're very, very busy and I, I, and I really appreciate the time that you've given me so far. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to, to share with the viewers to, to plug anything else that you're, you're working on right now? I think I'll just close with something about before we jump to conclusions and we're all sort of evolving and trying to become better people, right? And especially in these stressful COVID times and divisive times after the terrible example that, you know, that former president Donald Trump set out for our nation and the world, I would just suggest that we all try to take a moment before reacting with anger or suspicion to take a moment and just pause and reflect and try to think the best about the other person. And uh, I had an executive coach years ago who taught me, and I don't always remember, but she taught me to sort of come from a place of curiosity rather than why is that guy being such a jerk? You come, you, you come to it with a, huh, I wonder why he thinks that, why he said that. And if you come from that place, you, um, you have a different perspective and you can take a deep breath and, and be uh, more circumspect about, about the situation. And that is generally gonna be helpful for the whole, for your relationship, yeah. for the conversation. That's, that's great advice all around, I think. Yeah, yeah. And for your own mental health, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, thank you, Senator. And I have one, one last question for you. Yeah. Um, and it's a question that I, I'm starting to ask all the guests that we're having on here. And that question is going to be, what does peace in the community look like to you? Peace in the community um, means inclusion. It means a willingness and maybe even an eagerness to get to know people who are different from you. I love and that. that can be ethnically different, that can be politically different, that can be linguistically different, it can be um, people who eat different foods or pray differently than you. But again, coming from a place of curiosity, can you teach me about that? Um, that dish that you cooked for dinner last night smelled really delicious. So what, what was that? And what's the history in your, in your native country about that? And I'd love to try it sometime if you'd give me like a little sample or something. Uh, so I think we can build relationships, build bridges, build friendships 
among neighbors, colleagues, and, and, uh, and others that we otherwise might not do if we just, again, reach out, come from a place of curiosity and, uh, and say thank you to people. Um, I will say that I was in the grocery store the other day, which I never get to do, but buying myself some fresh and healthy foods. And there was a guy in scrubs and I don't know him and, uh, but his name, but, but I looked at him and I asked, I said, how are you? And thank you, how are you holding up? And thank you for what you do. And he was so surprised and so grateful. I just think we can all take that extra moment and say thank you. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, well said, Senator. Thank you. Um, and, and again, I, I just want to thank you again for your time, for hopping on this with me. Um, and for all the viewers watching, again, um, please, I highly suggest checking out all of uh, Senator Kagan's social media channels in the description below. Go give her a like, a follow, a subscription. Um, and again, if you want to know anything more about the Conflict Resolution Center in Montgomery County or support any of our efforts in strengthening the community piece by piece, you can check us out at our website at crcmc.org. And if you want to make a donation to help us continue our efforts to strengthen our community piece by piece, you can do that at www.crcmc.org slash donate now. And with that, I want to thank you again one more time, Senator, for joining me today and for giving me some of your time in this very busy schedule you have. Um, and thank you again for the work you're doing to support the community as well. Thank you, Ben. Thanks to everyone who supports Crickmick. Thank you for your time. And thanks for including me in your series. Uh, as always, for a, from a, uh, for a former peacemaker of the year, we'll always make some time for you, Senator. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay.